All right, today I will be restoring this Stanley Bailey number five. I can't tell what type it is yet because I cannot see how many patent dates are underneath all the dirt. Um, but it's definitely an earlier one. You can tell right off the bat by the shorter knob. It doesn't have the lip around the knob. It doesn't have the lip on the toe or the heel. It just has a nice thick sole on it, which is good because I'm going to have to sand a lot off to make up for all the rust that's on the bottom. Now I'm going to start out with disassembly and trying to get the bulk of the dirt off of it so I can have a better idea of what I'm dealing with. I'll give you another look at just how dirty it is, how much stuff's in there. I can hear stuff falling out of it. I had some people ask me to either list or mention some of the tools that I'm using in my last video. This is actually one of my favorite screwdrivers. It's made by Champion. And it says, Made Champion in the USA. And then it's got Ford stamped into it. I like the shape of the handle. It's pretty nice. Really comfortable. Most comfortable screwdriver I have, actually, is a Stanley. Uh, which is this one. It's a Stanley Sweetheart. You can barely see the Stanley Works heart there. Kind of says Stanley right above it, made in USA, underneath it. It's not the fanciest screwdriver, but that shape is wonderful. I love that. We got three patent dates. I know that's particular to a particular type. I don't remember offhand what that one was, so I'll have to double check that. Looks like the Japaning is in decent condition. I'll probably just clean it up and run it with that. There's too much original Japaning to, to take off and redo. I'm pretty happy with that. It's got a little wear in the joint, so it's not a perfect fit anymore. Pretty close, though. It'll glue up pretty well.
favorite screwdrivers. Made by Winchester. I like the brass. Handles pretty nice as far as comfort, especially with something that large. Now I'm going to start wiping everything down with WD-40. It'll help keep the dust down when I take it to the wire wheel, help loosen up the rust. Um, just kind of help move things along. Yeah, I think that Japaning is going to come out nice. It's a shame it was left sitting outside for so long. This was a really nice plane before the weather took its toll. Take it to the wire wheel, get all the rust off, and then I'll glue up this handle. Maybe I'll start with the handle actually. Gotta go find my glue. I took a heat gun to it to make sure all the acetone had dried thoroughly. Just using Elmer's wood glue. Set that aside to dry. Hopefully it holds up well. Now I'm going to strip down the knob using acetone and it'll take off all the gunk and varnish like I said before when working on the tote. Um, we'll see how it looks when it's cleaned up. I'm thinking it might not need any work. The more I look at this plane, the less I feel like it really needs a full restoration. I'm thinking I might try to do more of a, uh, I don't know, preservation sort of deal. Of course, the, the sole is going to need to be taken to the wire wheel because there's, there's no way of sorting that out. Um, but I think I'm going to try to leave some of the patina behind. Um, if I can get the surface rust off of these without taking it down to bare metal, that's what I'll do, but uh, if there's no getting around it, if I can't just take it down to something like what it would have looked like uh, if it had been well cared for its entire life, uh, then I'll reassess and might just have to take it all the way to bare metal. Now I'm going to be using my wire wheel. I'm going to start out with the lever cap, see if I can get just the rust off and leave some of the patina behind. Um, using just a general purpose craftsman motor, I think it is from 
1953. Some people in my last video were wondering why my why it was moving around is I only had two holes that fit so it's got bolts in the back um, but they're not tightened down really tight because I've got rubber grommets on it that's why it's moving gentle right now. I'm trying not to take off too much. And you can see where the metal's coming through, the rust is leaving. But it doesn't look like brand new shiny metal. It still has some age on it. I'm trying to hold on to as much of that color as I can but getting rid of the rust. This is gonna take a while. So there you can see as it's starting to come through, you gotta hit even pressure so that you don't burn through in one spot. Once you burn through in one spot, you have to redo the whole thing. You gotta take it all down to bare metal. Still feels pretty smooth under there. I have some hope that it'll turn out all right. Just have to be really careful. Wipe it down and see what I got. Yeah, I got a couple of bright spots, mostly around the keyhole. We'll work on it some more later with steel wool. Try to even things out. I really want to keep it looking like it's a hundred year old plane. So I finished wire wheeling the hardware, but you might notice that the brass isn't in there. That's because, as I said earlier, this restoration has kind of taken a different path than I thought it was going to, to begin with. Once getting into the details of it and seeing that this plane wasn't ever really abused, um, and seeing how nice the knurling is on here I don't want to take it to the wire wheel and roll all that over and it's going to move that brass around and it's not going to have that Christmas crisp edges on there um, and I want to hold on to that the, the same with the nuts there this one's a little damaged but on overall it's an amount of damage that that really adds up to character if things were really beat up if it had been abused then yeah, I'd just go over to the wire wheel and strip it down, sand everything flat, um, polish it up and make it look like new. But that's not the path that I want to take with this plane anymore as long as the parts continue to come out all right. Um, the most difficult piece is going to be the chip breaker. I've got it soaking in WD-40 right now. But this metal is really soft, so when I take it to the wire wheel, it's going to want to burn right through to the metal, and it's going to create shiny spots really easy. The blade is tool steel at the bottom part, 
and then it's a softer metal up at the top. Uh, I don't think it's quite as soft as the chip breaker, but it's real easy to burn through the patina on the top of the of the blade as well. Um, and then of course the sole is going to be a big a big deal and how well that comes out. If I'm going to have to sand it all the way down, and I'll figure that out when I get to it. Hidden. And then I'm going to go wipe it down and see what I got. It's a little brighter than I want it to be, but it still looks old. So I'm going to roll with it. Moving on to the blade. Now I'm applying a lot more pressure to this and it's still holding its color because it's tool steel. It's not soft metal like the uh, chip breaker. That's some serious pitting. That's gonna suck to sharpen. Now I'm gonna start working on the frog. Smaller detail areas I'll have to do with my Dremel. Pretty sad about that. Took off some Japaning by accident. Time for the sole. Fingerprints are messing it up, but it looks like I got all the rust off. It's got quite a bit of pitting in it. So there is a lot of pitting, as I've mentioned before. More than I'm willing to try to lap out. And... I don't know if I'd want to take that route anyway. If anything, I may flat lap the bottom if it's not flat enough. I'll check it. Um, but if if it's if it's flat already, close to it, I might not flat lap it at all and just leave leave it with that finish because. If everything else looks like it's somewhat original and after this gets some of its color back over like a year or so, it's not going to be obvious that people that somebody messed with it. Um, 
except for those spots that I took off a little japanning by mistake. So I'm going to have to think about what to do on this. While I think about what to do with the sole, there's plenty of other work to be done. I'm going to start working on the brass by hand. I'm just going to take a wire brush and gently get off all the gunk and grime without messing up the uh, texture of the surface. goal is not to make it look brand new and take all the character off of it. The goal is to kind of make it look like it's never been fiddled with, but more like it's just been well cared for over the hundred plus years it's been around. So it's still going to show the character, it's still going to show the history, it's still going to show use, but you don't want to make it look brand new if you're doing more of a preservation rather than a restoration. So it still has its color, it still has its similar staining, patina, but it's all smooth. There's no gunk still on it. That's all just in the metal. And getting inside of there is always difficult without creating the, uh, without it becoming too bright and showing that it's been, been cleaned. get it much cleaner without it going through the patina. So I might just leave that like that. Now I'm going to use uh, Scratch Out, it's an automotive product for getting minor scratches out of car paint. Uh, I'm going to put this on here and rub it all over the japanning and then kind of buff it off with a rag. I got these little wood sticked Q-tips so that it allows me to get in corners.
So, it doesn't make it perfect, but it gets off all the gunk and grime. And it definitely gives it a little sheen back. It still can be cleaned up some more. I might go over it one more time. But considerably better than it was. Alright. I went over it one more time with the scratch out and then wiped it down with a thin coat of boiled linseed oil. It'll help protect those spots where the japanning has come off. I also wiped down the entire sole to help prevent rust and it gives it that extra sheen on the japanning. Now I'm going to use my Dremel tool with the wire wheel to try to get in these smaller spots on the frog. Better than it was. Alright. Now I just gotta clean off the japanning like I did it on the sole. Brought out a lot more of the black, got off the gunk and grime. It's missing a big chunk there, some there, but that still needs to get more gunk off of it. Sometimes acetone comes in handy. Now I'm going to go back to the lever cap and hit it with some steel wool and WD-40 and see if I can get it to even out a little. Yeah, it doesn't look like it made much difference, but I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out considering how bad the rust was to begin with. All right, let's see how the handle came out. There's definitely gonna be a visible crack there. I'm gonna 
sand off the glue and see how it looks. Still got to sand it down some more. Got to get these scratches out from the heavier grit sandpaper. I think it's maybe around 150. Doesn't say on this piece. The finer grit that I'm using is 120 or 320. I think I'm going to get some epoxy and mix up some of the dust that I just sanded off, and I'll fill in that a little bit later. It's feeling really nice. Alright, all done sanding. Came out pretty good for the most part. Uh, you see just a little bit of glue showing through there. You can see the darker area where the, where the crack was. A couple of spots of glue show up if you look real close. Uh, this is the biggest problem, is this little piece that was broken out. And I sanded it down a little bit, and now I'm going to try to take some epoxy, mix in some of the shavings uh, that I sanded off of it, and then try to fill that. Hopefully that'll dry up properly and I'll be able to sand it down and it'll blend in. So I'll come back to that later. Now I'm going to sand the knob. So the next thing I'm going to look at is the, how well the frog fits into the sole. These machine surfaces, and you need to check them to make sure there's no high metal, any burrs, anything that's been uh, pushed down the wrong direction that's going to prevent it from sitting properly in the sole. So just to check that, I've got this stone to uh, kind of like a sharpening stone, but um, for sanding corners and stuff like that. So I go over this part to kind of check it for any high spots. And you'll feel them and you'll see the, the spots that are getting hit and slightly sanded. If you're going to be able to pick that up on my camera, but I can see all the spots that have been scuffed by the block, and they're spread out all over, so it probably will seat nicely on that section. But I can feel with my finger that there's a little lip on here that needs to be taken off.
I can see reflections on this side, that side, and a little through the middle. I don't feel any raised edges anymore. I'm going to do the same thing here. Set that down in there, and then it should slide back and forth a little bit, but you want to make sure it doesn't rock back and forth. Everything is getting good contact, as it should. Right. And I've thought long and hard about what to do on the sole, and I think I'm not going to flat lap it. I've taken it over to my surface plate and checked it from about here back is flat. The toe rises a little bit and I can see a gap underneath that, but that's not a problem at all. It'll actually help it ride up over um, the work so you're not digging into it with the front edge or anything. So that's not going to hurt anything having the little raised up in the front which is probably why it's raised up in the front from getting from hitting the rough the roughest part of the wood before it hits the blade so this is worn a little bit if i put it all together and it doesn't take a shaving the way that it ought to then i might revisit that that idea but as is even with the pitting it doesn't have any high metal it's not warped so I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna leave you know that visual of its history the worst pitting are actually is actually over here on the side you can see and there's no way I'm gonna flat lap that out of there so that's gonna be there no matter what might as well leave it leave looking consistent. set up magnet There's still more pits back here, but up along the edge, I think I got them all. Enough to be able to get a good sharp edge on it. So, to the belt grinder we go. rough grind now I'm gonna come back here and get it a little flatter because it's not perfectly straight on the belt grinder so I got to flatten that bevel out 
and then take it down to its final edge. got a burr all across the edge. Kind of doubt you're going to be able to see it. All right, moving up to 400 grit. 600 grit. Going to 1500. So I went ahead and filled in or and sanded down the filler that I put on that nick and now I'm going to wipe it down with some linseed oil. Well, for some reason, my camera stopped recording. But continuing on with the assembly. One thing that I did do off camera is I lapped the edge of the chip breaker so that it'll sit flat against the blade so no no chips will get underneath there. That's something I'd recommend doing. We should tighten that down before putting blade on.
Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up, drop a comment in the comment section below, and subscribe to my channel. I hope you'll join me for the next one. Have a great day.